Hello and welcome to Kansas Fest 2013 one more time. Yeah. Yeah. Another uh, impromptu session here. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. If there's anybody here that's interested in the assembly language programming and or bite in the bag, we're we'll probably just going to run this until we get cleared out of here. And we'll go over what uh, people have brought first and then a little bit of show and tell on that when we get to it. Um, with that, um, oh, I said that wasn't it. That's side bonus here real quick. Uh, disc 2, serial number 00046. That one is probably, was probably hand built by those two guys that were up front earlier today. He uh, looked right at it and said, yep, that would be one of the original ones because it makes a unique noise when it fires up and we'll get, we'll get it to run later. Okay, we have here, we'll start off with a couple of uh, great examples of they're so close but so far. This is, is 2E number 13, 01306, or 1306. It's a Reve 2E, and this one is serial number. 01601. Still say this should have been 1701. That would have been a lot more cool today. This is also a Rev A2E. Uh, a little bit of a fun trip. A little bit of fun trivia is these original two E's actually came in a case that were very, was very similar to the two plus in construction, a lot thicker, and. Uh, Except they just they changed the back for the FCC, added the nice the nice back plane. This, this didn't last. I'm not exactly sure what the cutoff is, but I haven't really seen any any of these higher than about three or four hundred thousand. I don't know how long it went. These will never yellow they're because they're painted. Like the Apple early Apple threes are also painted. Except for the keyboard bezel, that's actually injection pigment dyed plastic. Keyboard bezel would yellow. The lid on the older, on the earlier Apple threes would not because the lid was made of this. The later ones, like the three pluses and whatnot, were all, were all yellowable plastic. And uh, occasionally you'll see somebody at eBay trying to sell a lid or a whole case and saying it's rare, it's a prototype, it's whatever. And, you know, these were built just like this for about a year and a half. They didn't sell as many in the early days. Anyway, what I meant by so far but so close is these are both Reve, for all intent and purposes, unmodified, untouched, which if you think about it, back then when they modified, when they came out with the Rev B, the Rev B, the addition, the biggest thing was the ability to do double high-res graphics. They actually figured that out quite close to when they were about ready to release this anyway, but they hadn't worked it out and thought, uh, you know, what better of an upgrade? We'll just fix a few things and we'll do that. And we'll swap everybody's for free. So here's two that didn't get swapped. Somebody thought to hang on to it. And uh, if you even happen to have a Rev A and you actually want to make it do double high res, you can do it with just a couple of changes and some wiring changes. And you can do it all pretty pretty low key and you won't even, you can't even tell. The uh, extended 80 column card, 64K card, anything that has uh, more than 64K RAM, 64K or more, that plugs into the slot, has a little jumper on the front, down by the, down by the, uh, down by the like, pin 55 or so. You ever wonder what that jumper was for? To install one of those cards, 
AE RAM works, etc. in a Rev A2E with the jumper on, the computer will not boot. It will lock up. The jumper is on there so that you can use those cards in a Rev A2E. They figured, they knew that somebody wasn't going to turn it in. Somebody was going to use it for something. They took care of that. So close, but so far, but so different. One of the things you'd want to look for in, uh, okay, well, somebody says, well, here, look, this is an original computer. <coughs> you open it up and you see a motherboard that has one ROM on it, you already know that answer. <coughs> yeah, right here. And then uh, this one here, I have a feeling that this one that's 1300 probably never left out. Two reasons why knowing where I got it from. But number two, it doesn't have a date code on the motherboard. It says simply 13. I don't think it's number 13. Unless they started this at, at uh, 1300 and whatever. But no, it says number 13 up there. Whereas this one says 8233. And date codes back then were pretty much four letters, or four, four characters, excuse me. And sometimes in three characters, where the last character would be the year, figuring that it was going to be 80s or 90s anyway, they would not put the 8 or the 9. So it would say 38-4, which would mean 30, week 38, 1984. But it's very easy to tell when they put like 82, <coughs> 33, because that means the 33rd week of 1982, this was assembled. So if you look at components on boards, and this is where the, uh, was it, the Optronics, uh, his, his deal is you're building a period machine because everything in that box he sourced out to try to find the old date code stuff so you can build it authentically. You'll look on various chips and you want to look for the date codes, 8244, 8221, 8225, so the 25th week of 82, 44th week, and then you look here, 8233, 8244. Well, okay, was that changed? Or did all this stuff come in and then get built later? So when there's a date code on this motherboard, what does that mean? Does that mean when this motherboard was soldered together with the socket? I'm going to figure that that's it, that that's probably what it is, because you've got, you got a chip on here that's newer. Would have been serviced, except that looks. The little bit has been out of that socket. The legs look pretty straight. And uh, <coughs> a lot of the stuff, they basically, you'd have to buy it all up, put it in stock, and then, okay, we need to build 100. So they provision to build 100. But they wouldn't be uncommon for them to, make, to have motherboards assemble the sockets ahead of time and then pull them out and do it. Or they're waiting for these to come in because they haven't got them. This, this was uh, new for them, using custom chips, because th this went from 120-something chips to 37, because they put everything in. MMU and IOU, they put everything in there. The uh, other thing that you find on, on these is, is usually old school library book stamp. They dial the date on it, and they usually will hit the inside of the case someplace and put in there when they built it, or when the case came out of the uh, foundry. On the thinner stuff, you actually see dial, it looks like dials molded in, right, that point at a year, a month, and a day, sometimes an hour. But on this older stuff, somebody just hit it with a stamp. probably see from back there a little bit that the board in this one looks a bit brighter. <coughs> this one here. The silk screening on this is white. The silk screening is what's called the, the lettering that describes what you're looking at. This is actually has a more yellow look to it. It also has a uh, sticker that says CX Rev H, which is beta ROM. But yet it has markings 
that otherwise are consistent with production. So this leads me to theorize that this is more likely a first run. Let's try this, make sure that it is going to work, but it never left Apple, like I'm saying again. So you look at that and you go, okay, this is pretty much original authentic. Again, same thing here. If somebody said, here is an original 2E, I don't think I could doubt them. I'm turning around looking here. The screws don't have, the edges of the screws aren't dug out. There isn't scratches on the metal around them. This hasn't been taken apart. This is the kind of stuff you'd look for. Somebody you know, list something on eBay and they've torn it all apart. Now, you can get the motherboard out of here without taking the case apart. So you have to kind of twist it around a bit. But again, all these kind of things, this hasn't been messed with. Unlike mine, other than the fact that somebody probably had a sticker on here, and this, this blue rock will come off. This case looks pretty nice. The difference in color you see here, simple green will wipe that right off. Word of, ca uh, word of caution, the library stamp that I talked about earlier that's inside, it comes off with darn, darn near anything. You know that because <laughs> I took a picture of it before I messed with it, because I suspected as much. I will just get on the library stamina and I'll put it right back. <laughs> but, <laughs> that's a clue right there because, because, but wait a minute, yeah, it was made in 1979. Okay, well, why? Because it says it inside. Does the ink look really new? <laughs> well, who, was here, who was here a few years ago when I said, be weary of anything you can buy, because if I wanted to mess with the market, I probably could, and I pulled out a big roll of Apple tape. Yeah. <laughs> sealed up this too. Who's going to open it? It's sealed up. I wouldn't do that. This one, as you can see, has no yeah. vents on it. This will probably be a, uh, somebody said to me, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Somebody said to me, here is an original Apple II. It's not even green. It hasn't even, it, in fact, this has been hand soldered. I have a piece of this that broke out. American Airlines didn't help it. It was already broken when I packed it. This had a date stamp in there of, I think, April 77. And nothing on the bottom here. I kind of joked this, and I thought this was—I thought this might have been, you know, the the image of the one in the movie where they're running through the parking lot and they trying to go in the bank and say, uh, you know, here's our computer. And like, what a mess. But. Uh, Keyboard, very different than what uh, newer ones are used to seeing. In fact, this I think this one has a date of '76 on it. And it's signed by Was. Because <laughs> he's seen this one already a couple of years ago, ten years ago. But uh, it's a Datanetics keyboard. Yeah. Uh, yes. <coughs> So, who has uh, brought, what have we got out Yes, but. Oh, it's the short one. Oh. No, it's I not the one that, that has the little foot and the carved edge. 
This is actually the rare version of this card. Uh, the, ver the, the one that's commonly sold, a little more low profile, has carved edges, and the back has a little foot sticking off, so it doesn't go like this yeah. in the slot. But otherwise, it's a simple reference design based four meg RAM card, one, two, or four meg support. <coughs> and uh, so this has a, this has 256 on it, so it's got one meg of chips on it. Basic, I think you're one simple DMA compatible. Give me ten bucks. Okay, what do we got here? It looks. I would almost want to say it's probably one of the probably the original release of the two C, just by the simple serial number. That's two five five. Yeah, the, I mean the serial number is only seven seven characters on here. And uh, it's got the beige keyboard, the slanted letters on it. And it probably doesn't feel like it has anything in it. And there was a joke there, but I used to like, walk up and go through the, slot, the stacks of two, two C's, and this one has a RAM card in it. And this one doesn't. And I was usually right. I don't know how. There's something about the weight. I have no idea. Well. This one? Yeah. Use it daily or whatnot? Not daily. But, okay. Yeah, so it's pretty much the original the original release. Again, this one looks like it hasn't been messed with either. And uh, I wouldn't run into the safety deposit box or anything else. This is, an, this is an Apple, Apple's version of the Video 7 digital RGB for the color monitor 100, which is the one that has the electric tilt screen. Mm -hmm. And to get a cable replacement for this, you can go to a uh, PC store that still stocks all kinds of old stuff and get a game port cable. It goes from the motherboard to the 15 pin. <coughs> Is that a Video 7 card? It's a Apple's version of the Video 7 card, which is a Video 7 card with digital support and 64K. Oh, okay. Has, uh, I, I just shipped uh, Video 7. Yeah, the Video 7 version of this is shorter. It only supports analog. This has two LS399s on it because it goes through a, set, a series of circuits twice that make it be, that does a digital and there's two PALs. The analog one only has one PAL and one 399. This can be converted to be analog by, by taking about six things off of it. Would the Video 7 part have been valuable? There's more of those out there than people have monitors for. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I sold it for 25 bucks. You probably got, you made somebody happy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Adaptive firmware card. Basically, you've seen the pictures of the handicapped people and whatnot using machines with the blow straws and the high, and the Pointer on the head. Yeah. This is okay. this is basically what that's for. It's kind of different different ways of, to uh, input to the computer. So uh, essentially, what you call uh, <coughs> wedge itself into the keyboard firmware, okay. and that goes with this. What are those? The switches? No, this is a this is the Lego Duplo thing. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is a uh, this is for an external keyboard. Or is the no no I take that back. This is this is probably the this adapts the keyboard. This is supply power.
But no, it's this might have been used in conjunction or might have been totally separate use from that. <coughs> this goes this is basically right there. And then there'd be another uh, external box that plugs into that. Yeah, and I haven't found that yet. That's the uh, stick up box. It's adaptive firmware. And then this one here, which you have a uh, which takes two double A's, I believe. Time it? It's mounted hardware clock in it. No. Hold it up. Oh, okay. No, this is a um, this is adaptive peripherals also, oh. but it's not. I have to try it. No, it's. I think this was actually cash. No, it's not that. But it's not. It's firmware space to load support for this. Just fairly. This was this was fairly uncommon as far as being set up because you hardly ever. Everything usually ran off disks for that. That is a bitmouse card that makes it. Or no, not bitmouse, excuse me. Prayer. Bus mouse? Bus mouse, yeah. Not thingy serial, anyway, mouse card. Sequential systems. Right. Real by X8 So that's a super fun. <coughs> Clones had very slightly different things here. You typically, had two top, top two pins you hooked the monitor up to. The rest of it was for video in, for the soft switch, and if you had a light pin on it, inverse, lowercase, and standard case ROM. The cool thing about these are this runs totally independent of the computer. When I used to run a BBS, I had two and three monitors on the BBS because you could put it in there and program directly to them. You put all the user stats and whatnot on the other monitor, and you have the whole full monitor for your, what's going on. So you could put seven of these in there, but you wouldn't be able to load the software. So these are designed for the two plus. They work on a two e and a two plus, and I use them in all. And this is simply a this is a 16k language card for the for the two plus. Pop out the highest, most RAM, stick it in here, and you'll notice there's nine on here. <coughs> it moves it on the card. And this always used to make, this still makes me laugh today because how many cards could you put in slot zero without piggybacking and they work the same way? Including later offerings from Apple. So why they went through this? I mean, Waz didn't say, they could have saved 16 cents by changing, not having times two applied to this, plus this cable, but not having to put that stupid cable in there. Ram on the motherboard, but hey. No, that's it. That's it. That's a Sonic PS. I know what that is. Maybe you should explain that joke. It's rare. Funny stuff here. I mean, 
let me see this here. Only 750. Okay. So, this bag. Oh, there you go. This bag doesn't doesn't appear to have that sticker on it, but there's a little one here, a little tag here that says, oh yes, made in USA, number 97. Oh my God, this is number 97 bag. Oh, no. What do you think it is? Inspector 97. Exactly. Yeah. You think they made silkscreen tags for each individual bag? <laughs> okay, great. We're all on the same page. Those, those are still nice though. So there, there's a guy on eBay, yeah. Man, Mac, Apple Man. Yeah, one of the, uh, and he put a bag on eBay saying number 13. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, insisted on it. Rare. And I, like, and I wrote one an email. Of, one I of the said, cool options was. I said, it's the inspected by tab. Since computers were still. And he, he fought me tooth and nail. Friendly but relatively expensive. It wasn't uncommon for you to move them around. In fact, you've probably seen these things. And you've probably seen a big, huge brown box. That the lid lifts off of and the disc two strap onto it and a sign your monitor. Got one. Yeah. Heavy yeah. is all heck. And no wheels. And no wheels. <laughs> they didn't put the wheels on. Anyway, this was a common common thing in the day to transport the computer, to transport the Apple II around. Yeah, you could basically they sell you all this, you know. Okay, so what we have here is oh my gosh. <laughs> We have serial number 0311. Wow. <laughs> that is the lowest one I have seen personally. <laughs> ah, you, so you're the so you bought this originally. That's right. Did you buy it on an on ramp between the 31101 and the <laughs> 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 Yeah. All right, so what do we got here? Ah, you've upgraded the power supply and you're stuck on the battery. Oh, this is for the car. This is for the clock. What? An AE power supply? No. How much water? What do you say about these products? Okay. Look in here. What we got is. Oh, it's been bad. Oh, that's this. Okay. All right. You have. Motherboard that says 8107, which we, like you just said, you know, you know, you upgraded it because you wanted the colors, and uh, <coughs> so that basically brought you into the modern world. That is motherboard as old. It doesn't even have the breadboard, the breadboard section down here. Yeah. Does, it have, does it still have switch blocks? <coughs> it does not have switch blocks. <laughs> so it's a row seven. <laughs> yeah, it's a seven, six or seven. So it's <coughs> but you've got ceramic RAM. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ceramic RAM, did they pull the RAM back out of the original one and stick them in here? Yeah. Yeah, so you got uh, 728, which is 28, 1977. So week, eight, week 28 of 1977. So the RAM is probably original RAM. This is an example of the three digit date code. It says 728. You might have to think about it for a minute. But 77. <clears throat> you know, they didn't think about the future back then. They go, you know, we're only worried about the next few years. It's well, all going to be a fad. It's going away. It's we're going to make about 310 of these things, and that's it. That's 311. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a uh, early 80s Mockingbird, 83 84 era. I know this because the so the, everything is socketed. Everything's soldered down. <coughs> Actually says 8346 right on the uh, 6522. So, Occupy board in slot seven. That's interesting. But you probably have the rest of your original. You got this, this, this two card original. No, I suppose you bought the card first, but you got the five. Yes. Yeah, the old original. So gold. <coughs> <coughs> A little more modern version. Slide engineering would typically take the best features of the most popular hardware and bundle it up 
into a new product on their own. So they called, they made a ViewMaster 80, which essentially combines <coughs> the soft switch to where you just run the monitor from the outside back into the card and back out to your new monitor. And back, you take your 80 column video out. So when you went and actually did PR number three, or whatever slot this was in, it would automatically switch for you. So this makes you feel like you're actually using a more modern computer. And, uh, <laughs> but it's, this is also Videx compatible and does some extra features on this uh, as well. It actually runs a little faster. The Videx card, it's very common to see when you did a, li a listing in basic in 80 columns, uh, characters would go every other line. The, uh, the Viewmaster doesn't do that as, as blatantly. It actually scrolls a lot better. What ROM version is on that? The current car? <laughs> 3.0 and 1.1. Yeah, okay. Fairly, fairly. Last one. Oh, that's cool. 79.09. That probably isn't the original one. No. <clears throat> And the, the uh, leads on it, a few of them are tarnished, a few are not. Actually, Tarnex works real well on that. The ROMs have 1980, 78, this was an 80. That's interesting. 8049, that's their auto start, but then you, you uh, have yeah, 7825, 7825. So that's all. And then you have one that's an EEPROM or a mass bar line. That's what it's called. 7800. That's 7826. So that's actually good. Mm -hmm. There's actually one ROM on here that's, that's uh, ceramic, but it's a once only ROM. It looks like an EEPROM, but it doesn't have a window. And the uh, writing is silk screened on top of a copper. Usually you would put a, a clearer weight. Keyboard get up, did the keyboard get upgraded at some point? Okay. It had to, it had to be, because you, you, uh, you got the 48K sticker and the missing cap and missing weight. <clears throat> actually not labeled with the uh, logo. It says the little M Mountain and the script on it. So this is actually a very earlier version of the card card when the company first started making the cards. Sound about right? You bought it early on. <coughs> yeah. So it's Mountain Computer later on. Now this one actually says Mountain Hardware. And it's got uh, dates 1978. 78, 39, whatnot. So this is basically pretty, pretty far back on the yeah. What did that do? Clock. Simply, simply gave you the time. Okay. If you had an Apple Cat modem, you could do the same thing too, but every time you hit control reset, it lost a it lost a half a second. <laughs> In the RAM, as I was saying about the uh, saying about the 16K card. Here's an example of a 16K card that isn't 16K. This one is actually 128. Emulates a 16K card and gives you some extra RAM. Can be a RAM disk. Can be memory to stuff stuff in, and software crackers and whatnot would break in the monitor use certain versions of these cards where they would actually write protect the RAM by pulling out, modifying the card, whatnot, so they could put a switch on it and physically say, okay, you can't clear the contents no matter what you do. You break into the monitor, move all the code you want into this card, hit the write protect, as long as you don't shut this computer off, and if they even had modified batteries on this thing, they could shut the computer off, move that card into another computer. Unload huh. the contents. Okay. It's one of the one of the more popular right, uses for these things. If 
you were totally brave, you move with the power on. <laughs> I've done that with batteries and whatnot. If you put it straight in and straight out and hit control reset, you're going to get the card back on. In the, in, the, in the days of high school uh, being a little hoodlum, one day, you got mad at the computer lab teacher, I'll show her. Went over to the 2 Plus, opened it up, took the disc controller card out, turned the computer on, and put it in and out of every slot. We did it so fast and so straight, apparently, because nothing happened. <laughs> the damn thing still worked. This time she heard the lid open and she goes, put that computer away. Darn it. <laughs> one of the major improvements, one of the reasons for the 2E that uh, came out is the FCC was finally starting to go, you know, these things are getting popular and they're also screwing with all the people's TVs and everything else. And as you can see, this one has nothing inside. It's basically the same color on the inside and the outside. Mm -hmm. Later on, they started painting them with RF coding at least and making sure all this is connected. This was the product of that later on to where when you added a peripheral card, this slid down and this made sure that this grounded and contacted everything. Otherwise, the olden days is everything just kind of just came out the back of these holes and they put a little strain release on it to hold like, the silent type cable in there. And the disc too had a medieval looking clamp that held it by that floppy tab on the cable. Otherwise it would yank out, rip the card out with it. But this, that tells me that this is original just by not even opening, looking at the bottom. And the fact that this has imperfections in here where you can see they sanded it after it came out. This is, these things were made one-offs. <coughs> looked at it, yep, this is good enough. We can fix this one because they didn't come out perfect at all. Some of them were, would come out so warped or not filled in Chuck it. Start over. See the edges are very smooth. Kind of rounded off. Kind of no two are going to be alike. So you can look at that and go, "That's somebody. That looks like a good clone." No, that's a real. <laughs> the fasteners, by the way, if, you, if they're lost, actually you've got them all here. You just got to glue them back down. These are just 3M fasteners. I think they're called Microlock. You can still get those. Yeah. These these can still be got. Just like, the, just like the rubber feet that you can get at Radio Shack, yep. but the same exact look at the foot, and these things are really smashed down. This feet are real, it's a, that's had a heavy weight on it for a while. These are still available too. And it doesn't even have the stapled in FCC anything. No. Somehow they were thinking ahead and knew they needed to do something. But if you look at that, it doesn't even match up. It's one side's thicker than the other. That's, that's the way they work. Somebody made them and they said, oh, look, that looks cool. They sell it. That doesn't have our logo on it, so that's cool. And they sold it. This is probably from that era when they said uh, that the president of the company was sitting there and he pushed six, button, six record buttons and pop these out because then they got a rubber stamp and said this is what's on that tape because it doesn't even have a cool label like that. <laughs> this is how you used to have to do it. 8080 simulation, simulator for Apple. <laughs> that must be fun to play think with. Of the, think of the technology that's crammed on that tape. Oh, I mean, And actually these, these look, uh, you know, looking at the cassette tapes, some of these actually look quite Quite excellent in terms of this is a common problem, and actually I don't I don't mind it one bit now that the labels are getting so dry that they fall right off. Because at least there's one thing you know is not going to get any worse. Any discoloring or glue rot isn't going to get any bet any worse now because it's gone. 
And if you wanted to scan it for, for archive or whatever, they're perfect to get off. But that looks nice and white. These, some of these look really nasty. You must have been in the dry environment. And actually, I'm not sure that the dry environment has anything to do with it. I think it's, I, I almost think it's wood and fire. <laughs> yeah. Hobble on Cassidy, who was hobbling around earlier? <laughs> it was Stavros that was doing it, yeah. So we got Hobble on Cassidy and Lemonade. And actually, this is, if, another thing that's interesting to me about this is you have a few here that are an upper and lower case on the label. Mm -hmm. You've usually seen them all when they're all uppercase. With the titles are type. So these are actually slightly <coughs> Either the tour at the end or mass marketing. I think there's a uh, like a part number, it's like the cassette number 600, you know, something like Yeah, 600 2026-00, how long Cassidy? Yeah. There's, there are a number of different um, numberings of the, like, the, like there are lower numbers for the yeah, earliest. Yeah, you're right, yeah, but we'll start with zero. <laughs> Applesoft 2. So why would you have Applesoft uh, cassette? Uh, uh, I didn't have a disk drive, and you didn't have, you had <clears throat> what on the motherboard that Waz was complaining about? I put the routines in ROM, but I didn't write them. <laughs> <clears throat> I wonder if that's proof that they gave it away for free, because I'm sure they <laughs> came with a computer. AppleSoft 2, and a, uh, just in case you didn't know what it was, floating point basic written on the other side, but it's the same program, except this one has a demo that loads with it. So it would like booting the DOS 2.3 system after the load program afterwards. Whereas this side was load based. Looking at these, looking through the windows, I don't see any. If you ever get cassette tapes and you want to mess with them, first of all, there's probably really no reason to mess with them. So you find the WAV file online, or you find the contents online. In fact, the Brutal Deluxe site has done an excellent job of putting together a collection of these. But should you want to look at it, first of all, you want to make sure it sounds, there isn't enough tape in these things to do anything other than this. But make sure it's nice and loose, the wheels are wiggly in there. If they're not, simply doing that, uh, usually with, it's like taking a ream of paper and doing that. That'll fix it. Also, looking in the window, make sure there's no flex and spe specs in there. Not so much on a cassette, because you can just wipe the head off of whatever. But on a VHS machine, you put a tape in, a VHS tape in there with specs and junk in the window, forget it. The head's gone. It's all jammed in the head. It's, you're, you're done. Well, if they've got anything in there, just forget it. It's, a, it's, a, it's now a table piece. Looking at all these, I see, like you said, it's probably good because they've been in the dark. A few labels are popping off. But I like what I see. Albuquerque, New Mexico. You know how old that is. It's got Microsoft from Albuquerque. <laughs> there's a separate sticker even. There's a rock charm. <laughs> Weird Al, Albuquerque. <laughs> no, that's funny. Hey, look. First of all, you got a demo. That's actually got a lot of tape in it. Second of all, you got a place to stay with more stuff. I'm surprised they didn't jam that full of something else. Lemonade and Hopalong Cassidy. Penny Arcade and Finance. How appropriate. <laughs> First of all, we'll try to do our finances right now. We're tired of that thing. We're going to go play in the arcade. Green number and a pen, an alignment te test tone. Essentially, you put that in and you play it, and if you got the proper result, the desired result, a certain thing loaded, your, consent, your machine was either aligned or the head was clean enough to run. I actually wondered about this because there really isn't a way to align most of these simple consent decks when you push buttons. It just wasn't there. The thing either went all the way out or not. But they, they figured they better make it available. Brian's theme. No, not you. Yeah. <laughs> you. Oh, darn. I was hoping. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
This is cool though. 8080 80 simulator for Apple. This side only. And that, by the way, that wasn't on uh, Ruby Deluxe's site until like two months ago. Yeah, it didn't show that, up. That, it was that, okay. A lot of times, these guys would put the same thing on the, on the other side. It didn't cost them hardly anything else to do it, but the duplication, they give you two copies of it. So you can run it both sides. Mm. That way you don't need to rewind. Yeah. There's that, too. That's right now. Be kind, rewind. <laughs> if you're really in a hurry to do something, you <laughs> yeah. Well, plus every time you rewind it, you I'll stretch that tape just a little bit. Mm. Like this is the fancy yeah. days. That's the, this is another rubber stamp kit. Yes, again, this is probably one of those where you push six buttons and said, we need 50 copies of this. But the precursor of the, oh, look what's in there. Sean's not looking. You got one. Yeah, you got one, finally. Everybody talks about the red book. Blue Book was the Applesoft basic version of the Red Book. It's just Ooh. real basic. And pocket reference card with Applesoft commands. Wow. That's probably uh, that thing I'm pulling with right now. <laughs> <laughs> it actually was on the front. Yeah. Probably saw it. Somebody had it in there? Oh, in there, yeah. Somebody probably just put it in there because it fits, because that doesn't have anything to do with this. That would have come with the basic team. Uh, yeah. Checkbook, yeah. So essentially, the probably saw them earlier today, the stack of software delivery <laughs> floppies. This is what they used to do before. They put the stuff in the cassette box. So fairly generic off-the-shelf item. It wasn't like they bought it for themselves. But you know what? This looks cool. We'll do this. We'll make a nice presentation. Well, no, this, everything, anything in this era came like this, the same package. This made the manual fit, and you usually put it on your shelf in your library, and you had a slip in there that said what it was. That's cool. <coughs> Remember these guys. Simple, simple version of okay. We're gonna we're gonna adapt to make our own packaging. We'll just get a <coughs> styrofoam cut for us and glue the thing to it. It's like a book on the shelf. And as I was saying, this is again another. This is an excellent shape, except for a little bit of a uh, little tiny bit of water damage on the on the book there. But it's back side say duplicate. And. Uh, we had a few extra copies of the, uh... ooh, look at that. Wow. Thank you for your patronage. Scott Adams Computers, 178 Oxford Road, Fern Park, Florida. Salesperson, Craig M, ticket number 291, paid by cash. We must have been at a trade show or something. Or mailed in cash or something. That's supposed to melt cash. Forty nine ninety five in one magazine. For Thirty three twenty five for a total of fifty five eighty six. Wow. Dot matrix printer. And <clears throat> we got uh, actually this is the Apple version by Jeffrey T R S eighty and oh, I guess see what's going on, right? So <coughs> the package is actually labeled for everything. But the tape we're gonna presume is Apple, but if you have it. But it's not actually labeled. And then later on, add that to the disc. You probably got the whole thing at one time? No. Probably yeah, because it's actually this is actually stamped March 3rd, 1983. It's kind of late for the cassette era. But I figure that this package is probably set up for everything you need. It's kind of like a DVD Blu-ray combo. Yeah. Here's what we got. Digital copy. Oh wow, look. Talk about software development. This is actually cool. I haven't seen this in a while. Comp 
competitive royalties, professional packaging and, and advertising, that looks pretty good for the day. <laughs> international distribution, well, their name is Adventure International. Right. First rate editorial help if you need it. Send your program and documentation too. We'll give it your personal attention. This is to get people, you know, the guy that writes High Res, high res uh, Adventure number 10. He says, here, want to sell it? That's how the Beagle Brothers start. And uh, I'm, one that, I'm one that never sends these things in either. But except for the last few years, probably it's probably been about three or four years. But I want to say late 90s. I sent in a registration card for an Apple II. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of them. So I would periodically will just mail one in. Those, those things that come out of the back of the manuals, mm -hmm. the red and white card with the bubble, bubbles, yep. I fill one of those in. I'll send them in periodically just for the hell of it. I did that with my, uh, my uh, GS programming books around 98, 99. Yeah. <laughs> I sent in all the registration cards. And I sent in this thing for an Apple II. It didn't II. come back. And uh, I should find that. Man, I should find that. I got back a thin box with modern day tape on it, but a letter and a set of ROM, auto start ROMs <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> in 90, 90, 1998. Wow. <laughs> I'm thinking somebody found that on a shelf and probably laughed their ass off and sent it. That's kind of cool, though. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I got an auto set, an auto start ROMs at '98. Wow. Well, this, I don't even have, you know, the computer wasn't even, it wasn't even integer anymore. But I set it all up, put the right card in there, and I said, let's have some fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they just did. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Somebody's been shopping at that store on the border over there by the other end of the state. <laughs> they even have that back then. Yeah. <laughs> and the color gives it away. It actually has a manual with it. Interlude. <laughs> Ultimate experience. Uh, I remember <laughs> the ads for program. that. Apple II 16K and TRS-80 level 2 16K. That's a really long Is this, I'm not sure if I've actually seen, is this the same, this isn't the same as uh, Softcorn in a different packages. No, Softcorn Adventure was different. <laughs> yeah, this was something where the, the, the man and the woman would now each I answer questions and then it would come up with this scenarios for them to play out together. <laughs> oh. Based on their preferences and you know a lot about <laughs> uh, It is possible that when I was 16 or so, I read copies of this were interesting to, to uh, look through with sector editors. <laughs> it's possible. You know what you Eliza know is? Yeah. Kind of sort of fake voodoo uh, artificial intelligence. You put this in, and it asks you some questions and suggests a scenario of things you might do. <laughs> That's what Sheppy just said. Yeah. And with that, interlude number one, a bed of roses, the sound of music, pussycat, double your pleasure. As you like it. The foot fetish, how about that? <laughs> okay, the king and I. <laughs> Can we get any more suggestive? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think with 99, it's even worse. Yeah. So 99, I believe, is not describing the book. Ultimate experience. When you hit this interlude, your love life may never be the same again. <laughs> the computer holds your very secret instructions. It, it, is, it is also possible that I spent a long time trying to figure out the sequence of answers that you have to put in the questions to get that to come up. I'm not well, saying I saying, did. Because I couldn't get anywhere with it because the movie stars and things it was asking about were too yeah. old for me. I only actually ran it one time. And, and I, I actually did it at the local computer land store with the wife of the owner of the shop. <laughs> and we did it, and it suggested perhaps another time. <laughs> but yes, it, it asked me to choose whether I felt more like, I think it was like, 
five different movie stars. Right. And I, they were too old for me. I didn't buy what's different between them. I have no way. <coughs> 13 second disc. 13 seconds. And uh, now you can boot with the basics disc. Oh, it might have been. I've got a current one. Uh, the disc actually looks in excellent shape. It's any clouds on it. Any color discoloration changes. It's moving around in there. And uh, copyright 1980 Syntonic Software Corporation. Syntonic Software Corporation. Gee, that's even suggestive as it is. Yeah. Note to cassette users. To replay the program, you must reload the cassette. Really? No, I haven't actually seen this one. Yeah. <laughs> Great example of period era baggy wear that uh, the Brutal Deluxe published Zephyr, much of the same format. Published an Apple II title in 19 in 2013. Yeah. Did that come with any feelies? Hmm? <laughs> 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 okay, share them. I'm sorry, I didn't ask you like I should. I wasn't going to ask you, but I'm going to ask if you can do like Ashley Gag. Yeah, oh. If it's real, if there is a real. Um, I usually consider blurring in the photo that is their photo. I do. It's basically. You bought the computer they gave you that? Thank you. Of course. <clears throat> so weird, because it's actually. Uh, yeah, it's so weird. I haven't seen. I've seen this different, this stuff back here, but I've never seen this cover with, not, with a non Apple. That's the original. That's the original, yeah. That's what mine came with. Introducing the Apple II personal computer, so we've got. <clears throat> I've seen this information. Those original uh, slider joysticks or slider okay. panels on there. <laughs> the motherboard in this picture looks very much like the one that's in that right there. Oh, wow. It's not, it's not colored. It's got white chips on it. See what you're getting into. Yeah, on a site in China that's got the, that's got the bootleg the bootleg for, uh, boards on it, right? Yeah. This is uh, paper is in great shape, not yellowed or anything. Color hasn't color hasn't changed. It's not very it's not brittle or anything at all. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this to it. that came with a coupon that said that they were working on the uh, new, new manuals and that I could be in for. A great example of this was one of the first games that required strategy to play in terms of you would actually program your robot, program your, program your uh, specs and whatnot into this. The idea was to build a robot in software fight it against your friends, upload it on a BBS, or two of you meet in the same room and whatnot. Yeah, that's awesome. So you basically, it's a programming language that you get to uh, <clears throat> tell that you probably spent a lot of time on that. Can so you hear your core words? Yeah, basically core words. I think really cool stuff. I never did. You use it so much, yeah. yeah. This is perfect. This is, this is the one. Yeah. 
back in the day when you made, some people made copies that took a typewriter out and just simply made up a nice label. And that might look, but this is, that's real. <coughs> because they simply bought discs, just like you and I would, and duplicated them in-house with whatever wicked voodoo they might have, whatever machine they had. An iron. Put a sticker on it. <laughs> an iron. Put an iron on it, yeah. And uh, again, you know, the guy, we need 20 copies. Back there and make them. Go down to the local print shop and get your book done. Yeah. This is cool. This is not yellow. But I know who this is. It's underlined. <laughs> <coughs> Printing on it, paper and printing on it. <coughs> so it's got textured paper. I think they, they knew this was going to get handled. Because this paper has a slight uh, text, uh, plastic you like texture to it. They knew this was going to get used. So you got, yeah, you, did you send in the card on this one? There's no card in there. Auxiliary disc because the, the software would actually make you the discs for it. Set it up, and that was one of the first things it would do is you need a blank disc, you need two blank discs, mm -hmm. we're going to set this up. From uh, <clears throat> the local computer lands, you decide we should have Apple Group, they sponsored a contest based on this program, which it really had a great finish, in which my robot won, so I got to be president of this newly formed group. <laughs> Along with, I won a green screen monitor. Nice. Uh, nice green rod. As opposed to the black and white of the day. That's always through the nine inch black. Yeah, the nine inch Sanyo probably. No, this is just the normal generic. So you you have got an upgrade with that what with that monitor? Yeah. Which I think was several Also, hmm. <clears throat> the same one. <clears throat> there was a group in California that sponsored uh, contests based on this. And they this is where you mail a disc They accepted the mail-in yeah. contestants, of which I sent them a, an entry. I don't remember all the paperwork here, because I've, I've got results from several months. Yeah. It's, but it was kind of just, it was somewhat disappointing in, in two ways. Wow. One was, it was apparent from the, the material they sent me, they knew a whole lot more about uh, this you did. Thing than I did. Yeah. Number two, they were running it in the IBM world, and shortly after I entered, I think I learned that the IBM version had a bug in it, and so the super armor and tools that are used in the Apple world were not super in the IBM world. Oh, uh, so yeah. And so you know, I, I got ripped off in that way. And two, it, it, the mail turnaround was so slow that he would run several months worth of stuff before you could get it back and do something. So it just really was boring. But considering, <clears throat> considering back in our day, when you wanted to look up something, you had to beg your mom to take you to the library. That's right. Boom. Get there before the other guys in the class got the book. Google was a Google was a big wooden cabinet with a bunch of little cards in it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys in Google results by mail. What is the color purple? Yeah, so, so you'd, you'd uh, draw up your robot, like I was saying, and then you'd send it in. All the players' rankings, all the results, you get all this stuff back, and you go, okay, that sucked. So you'd do this twice a year. <laughs> <laughs> or you go to your local user group and do it all night long. Yeah, the A lot of work. Postal Robot War Tournament of June 1983. Let's go postal. Wait. <laughs> <laughs>